that jingle, that shit right there, all fucking 90s kids. You knew that shit. You knew it off by heart. Every motherfucker who was into video games back then knew that and knew what they were expecting. They were going to get their Genesis slash Mega Drive. They were going to go into arcades or and get their fucking game gear and shit. It didn't matter what system or what fucking platform you were playing on. You knew you were getting Sega quality games. Internally, in-house, Sega was a fucking monster, pushing the envelope constantly with all their franchises and games that they themselves were going and developing and putting out on the store shelves. Sonic the Hedgehog, fucking Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Fantasy Star, it didn't matter. They were just title after title, hit after hit. It was amazing. You know, when motherfuckers saw Altered Beast for the first time, fucking brains blew out their head. It was like, holy shit, first time you saw Vector Man, Comic Zone, it was like, holy shit, these games are amazing. Dynamite Heady, you know, it's just like, holy fuck. Decap Attack, more games, more games, more games. Sega was fucking badass. You know, that right there made me love them. I Hell, I wouldn't be the gamer I am today if it wasn't for the likes of Sega. Shit, I even think about it, not even just their games, but think about their marketing. Sega does what Nintendo don't. A big fat middle finger to their competition had fucking Nintendo quaking in their boots, realizing Nintendo was like, you know, very family friendly. And Sega was like, nah, fuck all this shit. We're going after an entire demographic that you seemingly just ignore. We're going after teenagers and adults. We're like, nah, yeah, you need to come here. Diddy's crazy, wacky, over the top, go for the fuck throat commercials inside magazines and on television in Japan they had even crazier shit it was fucking awesome I love that and it was a big part of their legacy and a big part of their charm you know from the way that the system looked the way that it powered up I mean holy shit blast processing that stuff right there is the thing of legends First time we even got to really see like Fanboy Wars, Nintendo and Sega constantly and then you know Turbo Graphics and Neo Geo was off to the side like hey uh what about us? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And just continue going toe to toe in holy shit, man. It was an awesome ass time. Sega was untouchable. That's all there is to it. The minute you saw Sonic the Hedgehog, you knew they, they had fucking struck gold. They had brought out something real like, no, we got a mascot too, bitch. You're going to fucking see what the hell that we can do. I mean, S Sega was on top of the world. All throughout the 90s and as soon as the 2000s hit, it was like, oh shit. That's when everything started to go into a decline, and then it just fucking had a dropping off point, and it became bad. So bad that Sega doesn't have that, they don't resonate with fans like that anymore. Fans don't trust them like that anymore. And as a matter of fact, Sega just doesn't matter, especially to gamers, like they used to. And when the CEO, of Sega itself, as a whole company, sits down with Famitsu and even admits to this, you know this shit is the honest goodness truth. Whether you're a big time long standing fan or not, comparing what they are now to what they were is like night and day. That transition is nightmarish to even think about that. He sat down with Famitsu and he had talked in great lengths about what Sega is right now and how he wants to go win back the admiration and support and trust of fans everywhere. He had talked about how we have kind of squandered our talents. That certain franchises, without naming names, have unfortunately just fell victim to being crap, frankly, because they didn't take proper care of them. Sonic the Hedgehog, by the way. They just stopped giving a shit. They were just putting things out to put them out. And you can't do that. You can't do that at all. How many franchises have they left on the shelves to gather dust? How many of them are completely unknown to the current generation of gamers right now? Tons of them. As a matter of fact, I could name off games until I'm blue in the face on every single one of the uh, Sega consoles. And some people would be like, I've never heard of that. And you wouldn't know it because Sega doesn't give a shit anymore. At least it seemed that way until this interview. He had, he had talked about how he wants to win them back over, that there needs to be a big time change. There needs to be a shift in quality. Quality or don't release, which I agree with. There is no fucking excuse whatsoever that a company goes from putting out the best to putting out to arguably the worst. How the fuck do you do that? That makes no sense. That means that there's a problem internally. Whenever he had talked about that, and he had mentioned one thing which everybody has been now talking about this and 
than just trying to guess as to what it could possibly be, but said at this year's Tokyo Game Show, which will happen this September, Sega will be taking center stage and announcing something big. I'm going to assume that it's not just one thing. That's an announcement of many announcements. I can't imagine it's just going to be one thing that's going to change the entire landscape for the entire company. If it is, that will be one hell of an announcement, but Sega right now would need to go and win people over by saying something such as, here is our release schedule. Here's our development schedule. Here's all the franchises that we're working on right now. Here's all the games that we plan on putting out. They would have to do something like that because that's what Sega is known for, their games. Granted, they have a big time legacy in the hardware market when it comes to arcades, handhelds, and consoles and all that shit, but ultimately we remember them for their games. That's what they need to go back to. I don't understand how this is such a hard thing to understand, but hopefully they are seeing that. There's, you know, when you love a company that much and love all the shit that they brought to the table and you see what they become, it makes you angry because you realize they're better than that. And I hope that they have seen the error of their ways. You know, th this is something where, it, obviously, they're very self-aware that they fucked up, and they fucked up bad. I mean, having an entire shift over into the mobile market where it thrives in only one-third of the entire world is the most asinine thing I've ever seen or heard of. When you build up your entire loyal fan base in consoles and arcades. What the fuck made you think this would be a great idea? And you leave everybody else outside of Japan just going, what about us? We want to give you game, we want to give you money for your games. It's just, I don't get it. I've asked this question, I'd even thought about making a video just titled, Sega, why don't you want my money? And that's the truth. Sega, why don't you want my money? I want to give you my money. I've talked about you at great lengths, multiple times, on this channel for years now. I've talked about you at great lengths with friends for years now about what you are fucking up all the time, and it's the most simple of things. You're talented, why aren't you doing this stuff? It just, it makes no fucking sense, man. It doesn't. But I'm hoping, I'm crossing my fucking fingers and hoping that Sega is going to do a complete 180 and start from scratch, start fresh, clean slate, and become the company that they once were. Because they deserve it. Fans deserve it. Most importantly. We shouldn't have to sit there and beg to get your games. You're a business. You make things, people pay for them. Why the fuck is this a problem? You had bought Atlas, which was one of the boldest moves and one of the biggest moves, and power play moves especially, that you have made in years, and you have done fuck all with them. Atlas, you said that you'll let them do whatever they want and uh, uninhibited. Not going to get in the way of any of their progress, any of their development, and you're not going to oversee it and try to dictate what they're going to do and don't do. That's great because they know what the fuck they're doing. But why is it that you don't decide to invest more in them and utilize their talents to the best of their ability? Because you're making games that aren't being released outside Japan. Isn't that something they could do? You could worry about just the development process of these games and focus more on the quality of those games. Make sure that the standards are extremely triple A high, 100% perfection, and then let them worry about trying to get these domestically released here in North America and Europe and everywhere else. What? I just, again, I don't fucking understand how this needs to be explained. I'm one fucking guy who's just a fan, and this seems like a no-brainer. Shouldn't you be doing that kind of stuff? Spend some money to make money. That's all you have to do. You know, next year is going to be the uh, anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, the, the 25th anniversary, that's a big deal, right? That's a big fucking deal. It's 25th or 20th, I forgot off the top of my head, but it's gonna be the anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, and it, the past, like, how many Sonic games have been fucked up? For every, every Sonic Generations and Sonic Colors that we get, we get a fucking Sonic 06 and Sonic Boom game. What the fuck, man? I, I, again, I just don't understand it. This stuff is just common fucking sense. If you saw how bad those games were, why the fuck would you think it's okay to release them? Duh! 
dumber than fucking sun-dried dog shit on the side of the fucking road. Like, that's what I consider it. When that's your mascot and that's how you treat it, look at Nintendo. Do you think that Nintendo would release an extremely bad Mario game like Sonic 06 and, and Sonic Boom? Do you think Nintendo would ever do that? Remember, your direct competition back in the day? Think about that just for a fucking second. You need to go and get everybody re-familiarized with your entire catalog. I'm talking bring everything back. Virtual Fighter. House of the Dead. Dynamite Heady, Decap Attack, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Fancy Star, Shining Force. You know, I could continue to go on and on and on, and there's so many of them. There's so fucking many of them, and you're not doing shit with them, and people want you to do things with these. And this isn't so much as somebody who's just like, oh, you just got nostalgia goggles on, and that's the only reason you want this shit to happen. Wrong, fuckhead. Think about this for a sec. It's a video game, a piece of entertainment. Just because I was entertained by it back whenever I was younger doesn't mean that somebody from this generation wouldn't feel the same way. I mean, why can't we get more Afterburner games? Like, why? I don't understand. Afterburner's fucking awesome. I love the shit out of Afterburner games. But when do we ever see them? I mean, truly. When was the last time we saw a fucking proper Dynamite Cop game? Doesn't really fucking happen at all, does it? The Renna Hero series has been Japan only and fans have had to translate it. That's a fucking problem. When there's demand for shit, I mean, Renna Hero number one was on the original Xbox. Never got released outside Japan and it looked fucking phenomenal. I'm like, what the fuck? The Yakuza series, I want you to put that shit on a map. I'm talking a big time advertising campaign because everybody should know about that series. It is one of my favorite fucking games, franchises ever that you have made. And you do shit all with it. I mean, fuck, when's, when's the fifth game supposed to come out? And why the hell is it getting released digital only? Because you don't have faith in this kind of stuff. You have no faith in your own franchises and in your own fans. You do fuck all to try to let people know about these games, and you do fuck all to even release these kind of games. And hell, your development schedule compared to what you used to do back in the 90s is fucking blasphemous. If what, what makes you think that making all those games back in the day and then making, like, almost nothing now is going to fucking help you? And I'm not talking about just churn out games for the sake of churning out games, but people would... F anybody in the video game industry would fucking kill, absolutely murder, endlessly, to have half or even a fucking fifth of the intellectual properties that you hold and do nothing with. Squandered talent, squandered IPs, squandered ideas. All because you are fucking lazy and you have lost your way. I hope Tokyo Game Show's turning point. I hope you announce tons of different things. I hope that you end up making a, a promise and you actually live up to it. You, you fucking need to. Because at this current point in time, you're just thought of as the company that used to be awesome. I mean, when long-standing fanboys no longer have faith in you and no longer trust you, and these are people that would have, like, gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody in a fucking argument and bought everything just because your name was on it, no longer trust you or want to buy anything from you, that's pretty fucking sad. Like, I, I, I don't understand it, man. I don't. This is all common sense shit. I hope that you're the CEO. I, I hope you're telling the fucking truth about this. That you want to win back everybody. I hope this isn't just hollow words and, and false promises. Because right now, the only way, if you're saying that stuff, it, it's it's reassuring to a degree. You got until September to really do something. I hope that you have a fucking idea. I, I want to see a truckload of new games coming out. I want Sega to go back to what they were. I want the company to start flourishing because I loved everything that they were making and people still will love the stuff that you had made back then nowadays because that shit is not being done in modern era. Like, it's not. So you're still unique. Nobody has taken your place. But eventually somebody will or you just won't matter and you'll get bought up by somebody better. Or somebody with a lot more money, and they might not do shit with it. Like Konami, when they bought fucking Bandai. Or, uh, yeah, it just... Oh my god, I just... I don't get it, man. I don't. 
I want them to do good, but I only have so much faith in them because they have fucked up so many times, you know? To all of you out there, I want to know, genuinely, sincerely, what could Sega do to fix everything right now? If you had to make a fucking wish list, what would you do? What what kind of shit would you do to win to have Sega go and win you over? What franchises should they bring back? What what kind of business moves should they make? You know, what what should they do that will go and right all the wrongs over the years? And uh, we're talking long-term plans, not just short-term, bring this shit out right now, stuff that they can do for this entire console generation and going on into the next one. Whatever it is, comment box, or if you want to do a video and respond to this one, whatever the fuck, doesn't matter. Share this shit online. Everybody should know that Sega is going to try to fix this kind of stuff, and hopefully they live up to that. Tokyo Game Show, I'm going to be keeping my fucking eye on you, Sega, just like everybody else who's a big-time fan. We're all going to be waiting. Anyway, this is Alpha Omega Sin. As always, nerds, nerdettes, and gamers, game the fuck on.